And we are live. With me, I have the shitlords of shitlords. Uh, Mr. Uh, do, do you prefer the, the name Jim? Oh, uh, yeah. Jim's fine. Uh, I've had a lot of different internet handles, but Jim has uh, always been one I've gone by, so that's fine. It has sort of a very uh, warm feeling to it, too, like you're, you're Jim. It's, it's very welcoming, yeah. It's very disarming. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but, you know, internet aristocrat, it, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? Uh, no, no, but it served its purpose, or at least originally it did when the channel was open. <laughs> it's, it's pissed off a very certain demographic, which was what it was meant to do, so it worked in that regard. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I, I, I know that... Uh, Oh God, I, I love your uh, your your series Tumblerisms. Fuck, did I have a good laugh? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was fun to do. Tumblr is a a shit show of a website, and there's quite a lot of different source material to kind of dig through. It's a really fertile hunting ground uh, when you're looking for bizarre shit. Um, kind of like a modern day DeviantArt because DeviantArt kind of diminished in popularity and use. Dude, I, I I once did an experiment. I, I I wanted to see just how much fucking furry shit I could find on DeviantArt, and my god, I, I I still I still have a trauma. Fucking hell. DeviantArt is fantastic for that kind of stuff. I mean, if, if you want to find like really fucked up teenagers that draw really bizarre fetish porn, DeviantArt is probably your best bet outside of like a really specialized place like Fur Affinity or something like that. Um. But for like the really crazy ass, long, rambling fucking rants about just any kind of subject matter you can imagine, Tumblr's, Tumblr edges it out. Uh, I think maybe that's because it appeals more to a female demographic than a male demographic, but that's all speculation. Either way, you could pick either site and really have a good fucking time looking at the crazy uh, motherfuckers that inhabit both of them. Yeah, uh, but by the way, what was that website you mentioned, Fur something? Uh, fur Affinity. I've never uh, heard of is, it. It's like fur fag central. If you if you want to if you want to see really disturbing shit, that's where you would go to find it. Um, <laughs> okay. It's, it's, again, it's it's more specialized. You know, uh, it's it's more specific to the subject matter. DeviantArt is kind of just a uh, a weird collection, a mishmash of um, just really terrible teenage art, which Did, is kind of the appeal. W would you say that DeviantArt is sort of the 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 equal to the gateway drug theory? Uh, no, DeviantArt, it, it, DeviantArt places kind of weirdly in between other websites, other social media sites because of kind of when it came into popularity and then what it got replaced by quickly afterwards. Um, there, there are ways to fuck with people on DeviantArt, but it, it's, it's, yeah, it just kind of faded away. If you're looking for like a gateway, it'd be more like, um, a Tumblr or something like that. And even, even then I think Tumblr is slowly going to be replaced by whatever the next fucking flavor of the week is as far as uh, online websites go. Oh yeah, no, I, I've heard that mayonnaise is very popular these days. I've, I've never fucking heard of that, but uh, if it's if it's some weird, unique bullshit, I'm sure it will be. No, no, it, it's 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 a gender uh, nowadays. No, no, no shit, actually. It started as a parody on, on this whole, you know, I, I don't feel like my biological gender bullshit, but uh, no, there are actually people who genuinely identify as mayonnaise uh well i i could see that everything that starts as a joke gets taken seriously eventually i mean fuck if you look at uh the subreddit srs it starts as a goon joke to fuck with redditors and get rid of certain subreddits they like to fuck with and then it quickly turns into the real deal of people that actually believe the crazy shit they were saying as a joke is now the reality there um tumblr when it started out was not the fucking safe space haven of the internet it was a place that people posted pictures of tits and uh you know sexy cosplays and makeup and shit like that and it kind of just morphed into something else so usually what started as fun or started as a joke will you know eventually gain legs of its own and turn into some kind of weird fucking abomination of what it originally was making fun of well to be fair though isn't that true of most social media um Modern social media, I don't know if you could say that like news groups and uh, bulletin boards and that kind of stuff really fell prey to that, but I, I think that has more to do with the, the technical level of the people using it. I mean, really early internet, the people getting on then kind of had to figure out how the fuck to get on, you know what I mean? It's not like you can just uh, buy a pre-made computer and download, uh, download the program you need. I mean, you had to have some kind of a 
a, some kind of background knowledge to be able to work it the way you wanted to. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I think the really early, early, if you could even call it social media, I don't know if it's really the same thing, but the early stuff, no. The modern stuff, yeah, yeah, most of it turns into an abomination. Yeah, you know, it, it was a pain in the ass getting on the internet back in the day. You you had to uh, pray to the modem gods, and if that didn't work, you had to slaughter a fucking chicken and do a rain dance. Uh, j j just just to get online, but uh, yeah, no. It, to, to, to get into the actual discussion now, and, and before we actually get into the heavier issues, I, I, I have to ask you this question, and it's a fucking cliche at this point, but I, I am genuinely curious, because fuck, yeah. do I enjoy your content, okay? And why the hell did you start making YouTube videos when you could actually do something more worthwhile with your life? Not, not that I'm complaining, mind you. I, I very much enjoy your content, but I'm I'm genuinely curious. Why I do YouTube or why I did YouTube videos as opposed to just doing something else with my time? Well, yeah, pr pretty much. Like, what made you actually enact the labor of uh, you know making these YouTube videos and making them so goddamn good? Holy shit, Suey Park. All right, enact the labor. I haven't heard that one in a while since that Huffington Post interview. Um, oh yeah, I, that's I, right. She did say that. Yeah, she did. Um, I don't know. I mean, people have this weird idea that um, you can't have a hobby of shit posting or making videos or doing whatever uh, to kind of enjoy yourself. It's almost like um, I, I think it's more of a Reddit mentality that you have to have like some kind of weird regimented schedule that you're getting the most out of every minute of your day. But for me, it has always been about having a laugh and fucking around, and it was something that I really enjoyed. So I didn't really put a lot of thought into what well, could I better spend my time doing something else. Um, I, I think that's how every hobby is, really. I, you know, I like playing video games. I don't think to myself when I'm playing video games, well, I could be out there building an orphanage. You know, I, I think, well, I enjoy playing video games, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, it, that's just kind of, I guess, the approach uh, that I would say that I have. Um, as far as could I be doing something, I, I, I guess I should ask, do you mean more productive? Do you mean that would be more beneficial to me personally? Like, should I go pursue something else instead? Or are you just talking about why do I like fucking around doing this specifically, I guess? Well, uh, it, it's actually a bit of a trick question because I actually partially know the answer myself. I mean, there's a reason why I make videos myself. Uh, but the, the thing is, uh, I mean, you're obviously a, a very intelligent uh, man. And uh, it's, it's very... Because the thing is, when you watch your videos, and 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 uh, yes, they are very much just you know verbal shit posting sometimes, and it's it's really just made for laughs, I guess. But there is a very intelligent red thread throughout every single video you make, and it's quite apparent. And you always get to the damn punchline. Now, people may not always agree with that punchline. Fuck, people let me know when they don't agree with my punchlines in my videos, but. It seems like it seems to be universal that people enjoy your your videos, and and that actually does require effort. So, basically, my question was, uh, why did you sort of uh, why did you uh, put so much time in in into your your videos when when I mean yes, personally, you could probably do something a lot better. Like why why did you do that? Did did you want to enlighten people? Um, well, no, I, I, I've been doing videos now for way too fucking long, way too many years. Um, when I got into doing it, it, it there was kind of a, a different mindset in early YouTube, uh, back when the site was just really, really young. It's not like it is now. Um, when it first started out, it, it, it people put a lot of, uh, production values into their videos. Now, if you see a new channel open up, they always want to have the nice intro graphic. They want to have this almost TV-like format, right? Uh, they put a, a lot of time and effort into it, starting fresh out of the gate. I kind of meandered into doing a little bit of that, not a lot, though, um, as I went on doing it. But when I first started out, nobody gave a shit about any of that. It, it really was just a video form of shit posting, and that mentality has stuck with me um, throughout the years. It'd be like saying, it, it, for you to say, it, I look at it like this. I mean, you say, well, you, you put a lot of effort into it, it doesn't feel like a lot of effort to me, I guess. Oh, um, stop it'd be like, bragging. No, it's the truth. It'd be like saying you, you put a lot of effort into your tweets. I, that really is how I look at it. I mean, it's it's a video format for shitposting and fucking with people, and that is always how I viewed it. 
Um, yeah, I talk about stuff that I'm passionate about sometimes, but the majority of the time, uh, the majority of the videos that I've done have been about something that I find humorous or fucking bizarre. And I like to point out and say, that's some weird fucking shit. Okay. Now, I, I would like to go into a more serious topic, and that would be Black Lives Matter. And it, it is a movement. I, I've made streams about this before and have had discussions. Uh, one of them is, uh, I think it's titled Helter Skelter. Uh, and basically, uh, my opinion of, of Black Lives Matter is that it, it is maybe not a terrorist organization at the moment, but it is... Uh, one brewing, so to speak. I, I think it's very much headed towards that direction. Uh, you have a lot of violent rhetoric, for instance, in, in Black Lives Matter, and some of the members of this uh, loose organization have become sort of lone wolves, if you want to uh, uh, take something equal to Islam, for instance. Uh, and, and these lone wolves have done violent acts towards police officers and towards uh, civilians. Uh, basically, I, I just want to know, what do you think of Black Lives Matter? N not just in general, because I think we already know that, but do you feel like it's a genuine threat towards uh, just the American lifestyle? Uh, do, do you think that the average American should be afraid of Black Lives Matter? I, I think it, it's a few things, I guess. I, I, as the movement as a whole, if that's what you want to call it, uh, and kind of refer to it, um, I think it's a movement made up of, uh, you know, every protest is a riot. Every martyr is a thug. All their leaders are con men and all the followers are fools. That is Black Lives Matter summed up as best that I can give it to you. Um, it's kind of this entitlement mentality of we want, we want, we want, give it now or I'm going to tantrum. It's this millennial mindset. And people get pissed off when I talk about millennials. They're like, oh, fuck you. We're not all like that. A good majority are. A good majority of millennials fall into this fucking category. And I'm not saying that's through any fault of their own, but I'm saying that the society that raised them have has instilled this into them. And it's fucked with their head. But Black Lives Matter has this entitlement mentality where if they kick their feet hard enough and they tantrum long enough, they get what they want. Uh, if you look at the demands and the list that they present at all these different universities that they go to, it's always shit like, it basically sounds like a fucking Bernie Sanders campaign. Give us free money. Give us free education. Give us free housing. Uh, fire the professors that give us bad grades. Put in professors they are going to teach, I don't know what the fuck they want, abonics. Um, you know, dedicate statues to our, you know, in our honor on the fucking campus. Take down statues we don't like. Funny little side note to that is, it's not even just in America. I mean, yeah, we've seen it kind of spread to Europe and you've seen it in Britain and the UK and all that shit, but go look at South Africa. There has been about uh, three or four protest movements over the last two years in South Africa, and the demands that they raise are almost word for word verbatim the same as what you're seeing in America. It's like they have the same fucking script they're working with, which is not necessarily you know, uh, a coincidence considering that uh, certain people in the Black Lives Matters movement are being housed and uh, really nice places by people like Soros. So, you know, you, you feel like there's some political machinations going on behind the behind the scenes. You've got people like, what is his name? Sean King, right? Or not, is that the one I'm thinking of? Who's the white guy that pretends to be black? Oh, uh, that, that is, uh, yeah, King is his name. Uh, what the fuck is it? Um... How, how, fucking, how fucking fitting is it that his name is Kang? <laughs> Considering the fucking <laughs> movement that his ass is a part of. Yeah, but no, it, no. And then when you look at the, okay, if you break it down, what happens? You get some black person that gets shot and they get all pissed off about it. But I wish they, they could pick somebody who actually was legitimately not fucking doing anything. Somebody who didn't have a police record, somebody who wasn't a fucking gangbanger, who beat his wife in the streets, somebody that wasn't running from the law, somebody that wasn't violent with a store clerk, somebody that didn't pick a fight with a fucking a Hispanic guy doing a neighborhood watch. But they never do. They always pick these crazy motherfuckers. I mean, what was the most recent one with the woman who was basically a "Am I being detained?" chick, who was, uh, you know, sitting with a shotgun pointed at the door with her oh, kid yeah. in her arm, oh yeah, and telling the cops she was going to kill them. You know, they create these bizarre scenarios where they expect the police to what, to gradually, you know, uh, to spend 
48, 72 hours sitting down and telling her how pretty and smart she is and that they're totally wrong and oppressive and that she she doesn't uh, have to show up to court. That uh, her boyfriend who was resisting arrest and had all these other charges against him and her with her resisting arrest charge and her traffic tickets, they don't need to go to court. They're black. They're special. They're entitled. And so they're not held to the same standard. They talk about how they're nonviolent when they've got people like uh, the crazy motherfucker. Again, another interesting coincidence, another am I being detained guy who uh, shot cops in Dallas. And they're like, that has no connection to Black Lives Matter, except for the fact that his social media talked about them all the fucking time, that he followed the groups. He specifically followed the ones in Minnesota who have also had some of the most violent protests. They, uh, the most recent one they had ended up crippling a fucking cop. They threw a cinder block on his head from an overpass bridge. Yeah. So uh, there was a you know a video of them throwing uh, fucking M80 uh, firecrackers into cop lines, and then they act like they're so fucking innocent. I think people are reaching a point where they're sick of it, where they're watching this unfold because everybody's live streaming it, where they're seeing the pictures and they're hearing the rhetoric because it's spread everywhere on social media, and I think people are starting to tune into it. And that that safety blanket that they use that if you criticize them that you're racist is bullshit. I know, I know a lot of black people that can't fucking stand Black Lives Matters for the same reason I can't stand them, because it is filled with idiots, entitled, whining, fucking idiots that want to blame their position in life and the things that haven't gone the way they wanted them to go on somebody else. And in this case, they're blaming it on the you know patriarchal, white, oppressive society, and specifically the horrible police. You know, they act like these cops are out... Uh, 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 close up here quickly they act like these cops are out to get them but then every i mean it's almost it's almost from the same script every single time this happens they say oh my god the cops uh killed this person for no reason and then what happens we get video we get testimony we get evidence that yeah the uh, woman or the man that ended up uh, getting shot was being violent or they had a criminal record or they were doing something fucked up yeah okay. yeah and, and i mean also just, just to signify the point that black lives matter is an anti-cop organization. They, they are anti-police. They, they, they have this fucking um, uh, rhyme, for fuck's sake, uh, pigs in a blanket fry like bacon. Uh, and th th that's just one of them. And they've, sh I mean, there's a videotape of them shouting, um, what, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want it now? And, and th th that's just two examples. There are so many fucking examples of this group openly declaring a, a war on on police and the, the naivete so to speak of of some of the members uh i mean some of them i do genuinely just think we're sucked up into it i i don't think every one of them actually wants cops dead dead of course uh but the ones that don't actually uh want you know dead cops they they need to either fucking speak up if they actually believe in the movement or they need to get the fuck out of it. And well, what, what does the movement even seek to address? I mean, we're talking about, okay, well, you know, some good people got sucked up into it. But if you read the demands that they put forward, it's absolutely batshit fucking crazy town with a list of shit that they want. And it, it, it's, it's farcical. How can a reasonable person be a part of this movement and think that they're going to get those demands or that those demands are even reasonable in the first place? Even if they try to separate themselves from the main uh, thrust of it and stay away from all the, the, the fuckheads that are out there screaming, kill the cops and burn down. The, and that, that's another thing that blows my mind. How the fuck is that helping anybody? You say that you're upset that the cops killed uh, somebody that you said was innocent, that shouldn't be killed. So your response to that is to go out into your own neighborhood and burn down local businesses, rob and loot and fucking pillage. How, how is that ha you know helping anybody? And the thing is, these are black neighborhoods, so they're not fucking with whitey. They're burning down the fucking jewelry store and the gas station and the fucking car shop that are owned by black people that black people work at. They're burning cars that are owned by black people. They're taking possessions that are owned by black people because they're mad at white cops. It makes no fucking sense. Yeah, I, I wanted to get in on that, actually, because it's just ridiculous how self-destructive um, not just Black Lives Matter is, but, you know, just the black community in general in, in the United States. Uh, you, you have this very weird uh, mentality that somehow by destroying our own fucking neighborhood and essentially just 
exacerbating, you know, gentrification by doing so. Because who, who the fuck wants to set up shop in an area where, you know, it, it's it's notoriously, uh, you know, high frequency of, of of riots and shit. And no nobody, no sane businessman wants to set up, you know, any kind of business. Uh, in, in such an area. So what the fuck happens? Well, the places that, you know, get vandalized, uh, unless they're brave enough to actually stay put, they're going to get the fuck out of there. And, and you know, you're just going to get even more gentrification in, in black areas. It's, uh, yeah, by the way, I, I just want to know, why do you think this uh, very strange uh, affliction uh, is, is the case when it comes to black America? Why do you think black people in the U.S., very often end up destroying their own fucking communities. I don't know. They're fucking stupid. They're lazy. They can't drive the 20 minutes out of town to go burn down some white neighborhood. I have no fucking clue. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't see how you're supposed to get black support for your black movement when you're destroying black property. Yeah. because you're angry at a white cops. How does that make any sense? Why is it when they're pissed off, they go destroy a local business, but they don't have the balls to go fuck with the cops? Yeah, no, I, no. Know, I, I don't. I don't see them going to a police precinct and burning it down. I don't see them looting the fucking mayor's house. They yeah. seem like pussies to me, cowardly pussies that are lazy and retarded. Yeah, and and, and the worst thing of all is that uh, I can't remember who it was now, but it, it was a member of the Black Lives Matter who uh, I, I think tweeted this out. I, I think I saw this in a tweet uh, that it was brave of of this uh, man in in Dallas. Uh, yeah, I think it was Dallas who who uh, sniped and 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 killed uh, a, a bunch of police officers. Yeah, it, it's it's very brave to to be at a safe distance, hidden, and you know just sniping people off. That makes you very brave. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, no, there, there is definitely this uh, n not just when it comes to rhetoric, but I mean, w when you look into the kind of people that they idolize, like you mentioned before, it's it's usually thugs and. Uh, just, just, just people who are con artists. Uh, but, but also there is this woman. Again, I can't remember her name, but uh, she actually fled to Cuba. Uh, she, she uh, is is one of the most wanted uh, on FBI's list. Um, uh, do you know her name? I, I've, I've forgotten it. Um, let's no, I'm see not now. familiar. Yeah, no. But that's the kind of people that this organization idolizes. I, I think it's very obvious. Uh, and m mind you, this is not something that you have to dig to find. Like a simple Google search will give you these results. It, I think it's very much like you said earlier that people, since information is very easily accessible these days, I think the reason that so many people are so vehemently against Black Lives Matter, you know, most black people too, is because even though the media tries to hide their, their uh, violent side, you know, you, you, you can't really hide much on the internet. It, it, it just is impossible. P people are going to get access to it. Uh, do you think that, uh, yeah, we might as well get into another topic. Do you think that the internet uh, has helped uh, the fight against uh, radical ideologies, or do you think it has only exacerbated their growth? I think the internet is a tool that places the onus on the individual. You're going to be presented with information regarding pretty much any kind of subject you could imagine by a variety of sources, whether it's about ideologies, whether it's the media and entertainment, uh, politics, philosophy, it doesn't really matter. You can't expect that what you're going to be told or what you're going to find when you visit a website or you follow a personality or you watch a video or whatever is going to be true or accurate. Uh, you know, there was this notion that before the internet, uh, books that were published, television, the movies, had to have some thread of decency behind them or fact-checking behind them or, or something to get them out into the public sphere. The internet has basically removed that. And now anybody can put anything forward. And it's up to the individual to do their due diligence to find out, is it real? Is it not real? Is this fucking crazy town? Is it not crazy town? Uh, what are the influences? What are the connections? Where do I look and how do I find it? Um, I think that one of the problems that arises are people today are really fucking lazy. Uh, they don't check anything. They'll believe anything at first glance and they get sucked up rather easily into pretty much anything you want to put forward. 
I mean, Sam Hyde is a mass murdering serial killer who hacked Leslie Jones' account. We all know that. It's factually confirmed. So, you know, that's the that's the situation you're running into, I think, with the modern Internet. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've noticed. I mean, I, I know how to do this because I am in a STEM field and, and you learn this stuff. You, you, I, I know how to do proper fucking research when it comes to things. Uh, but I, I've, I've noticed, and it's fucking horrifying, really. A lot of people in, in my generation, they, they just do not know how to do proper research. They, they, they honestly think that I fucking love science is a reputable source. You know, and uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, how do you think one could improve this, though? Do 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 you have any idea for solutions when it comes to this? Um, there, there are no solutions. We're fucked. People are stupid. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the reality. People are really fucking stupid, and people are really fucking lazy. Look at the laws that are being enacted in regards to the internet itself. Uh, when you're talking about who controls it, what's allowed on it, how sites uh, run their own services, I guess, uh, and kind of how they shoulder up to one another to create these kind of almost unified terms of service. They're all kind of blind. People are mostly apathetic to what's sort of going on right now, uh, whether it's legislation or just uh, internal business logic, I guess. Um, there, There is no salvation. There's no salvaging it. People are fucking stupid, and uh, this ship is going to run aground. You might as well enjoy it while you can and have a good laugh while you can because it's not going to be like that for much longer. That That's my view on it. It's The problem will be solved in the worst way possible by the people you don't want solving it. That's the answer. Well, uh, if I may ask, who, who are those people? You're going to talk about international business interests that are looking to secure their trademarks and copyrights, so they're going to make sure that you can't put up certain content on sites like YouTube. You're going to talk about groups like Google and Twitter and Facebook that are working with uh, the European Union. I mean, when you're, okay, here's one thing most people aren't aware of. When you look at the change, kind of the um, about face that happened or the radical shift, even though it was kind of, kind of already there, but the really radical shift that happened on Facebook or Twitter or Google in regards to YouTube. Most people don't know that there is a connection to the European Union. It does have something to do with hate speech and legislation that's coming from places like Germany and that they agreed to implement these new terms of service in regards to that. You have these politicians in international business interests that are basically shaping how the internet is going to be. They want it fucking sanitized and they want to make money from it. And you getting on stream and showing a clip and making a joke about niggers or saying gas the kikes race war now fucks with their ability to play a Disney cartoon and an advertisement for whatever new toy they want to sell. So that shit needs to be cleaned up. Well, you know, when that gets swept away, a lot of other stuff is going to get swept away with it as well. Jokes, satire, comedy, it's going to get flushed down the fucking toilet because people, again, are lazy and fucking stupid and can't tell when somebody's making a joke. So these kinds of people with an actual interest in making something the way they want it, whether it's politically or monetarily, are the ones that are going to influence the way, uh, kind of the direction that we're headed. And that scares the shit out of me. And they have a, a army of useful idiots at their disposal. And we talk about groups like social justice warriors. Uh, even Black Lives Matters falls into this category. You know, they're bitching and bitching and bitching. Hate speech, hate speech, hate speech. Oh my God, I got trolled. I'm so fucking traumatized. I'm so fucking triggered. Somebody please come save me. Jack from Twitter, please clean this mess up. Leslie Jones can't tweet about Ghostbusters anymore. You need to ban Milo Yiannopoulos. You need to get rid of these alt-right thugs. Oh, oh, please, Mark Zuckerberg, please, you know, implement a new system because we can't talk about uh, diversity in Europe anymore openly. Uh, so we need to clean up Facebook. Oh, please, Google, come in and save the day. Uh, we need to get rid of some of this hate speech on YouTube. And again, look at the window, the timing, when they started talking to the EU, when they started talking to these different lawmakers and these different corporations with their fucking interests, is when they started implementing these kind of new radical changes to their services. These yeah. idiots are, are facilitating it, and these groups are happy, or, you know, happy to oblige because that's the direction they want it to go. You yeah, know, I've tried to talk to some of my friends about this too. I mean, e even some fellow shitlords uh, on on YouTube, and some of them are are skeptical. But but the thing is, 
you, you, it's not like you have, you know, all these business people and, and government officials sitting in a smoky room and, and just, you know, signing deals in secret. But there, there are common interests among uh, private individuals who have ideological convictions and corporations who want to make, uh, who, who want to sanitize their social media. And you also have government who has a an inherent interest in, uh, you know, basically lowering the, the volume of, of certain discourse and all of these interests they, they will conspire maybe not you know directly but indirectly and it's it's up to us as people on the internet to fight back against this and the thing is it, it's not like this is the first time that people have attempted to uh you know sort of uh to, to tame the internet so to speak uh people try that Shit, you know, from the very beginning, but uh, I, I wasn't a, I was only, yeah, I mean, fuck, I, I was born in '91, so I was born on the very same day that the internet became public. I think, uh, so the very first, you know, phase of the internet, I, I was, I wasn't around to experience it, so I can't really give a re frame of reference. But from the age of ten, when I really started to get online more, um, I can tell you that there has been a shift. Definitely. Uh, people, generally speaking, aren't as open-minded uh, and aren't as tolerant of uh, so-called uh, hate speech as they used to be. And yeah, the, but the thing is, though, I, I'm actually more hopeful than you are, I think, because I, I actually do think that people are, generally speaking, waking up. I think they are realizing that traditional media, and they are also pushing this, mind you, uh, that they are lying to them, that they are um, withholding information from them when it comes to, for instance, the migrant crisis. And yeah, well, I, I, here, here's the issue with that, though. You, you raise a couple of good points. Um, when you're talking about people waking up, yeah, I agree. People are more tuned into what's going on. They kind of see what's happening and they, they disagree with it. They want to be able to say what they want on the sites that they want. They don't want all these uh, outside forces kind of interfering with that. But how are they going to stop it? See, that's that's the problem. When you start to have these groups that are exercising control over the internet, when they're closing avenues of conversation, social media, different websites, when you take that voice away, there's nowhere left to complain about it on. If you can't post on Twitter, nobody on fucking Twitter is going to know you have a problem. If you can't put a video up on YouTube about the problem with YouTube, nobody on YouTube is going to know there's a problem. When you can't post on your Facebook wall that something's fucked up about Facebook, nobody's going to know there's a problem. They keep closing those avenues one by one by one by one until what do you have left? What, what site can you really name at this point other than one or two where you can actually go and talk and speak your fucking mind without somebody getting up your ass or deleting your comment or banning you? You have me or, you know, the news media uh, or even scientific journals now are engaging in the practice of basically shutting down comment sections. They put up articles, I, I'm sure you've seen this yourself, where you go and read something and want to leave a comment and you can't, you don't even have the ability to leave a comment. There's no comment section anymore. And even if you did have the ability to leave a comment and to say something about whatever the media is reporting or whatever some journal is talking about, it's heavily moderated. You'll get banned, uh, you'll run into issues. And you know, all, all these old accounts get closed down that were basically set up in a free way. And now if you want to start a Twitter account or a YouTube account or a Facebook account, they want fucking 14 forms of government ID. You know, it, it's this perverse way of, of fucking with people so that they can't dissent. That's, that's kind of what it's going to. And, I, you know, I, I'd like to have hope, but people want to make fucking money. That's what it is at the end of the day. It's about fucking money. And if shutting you up makes them another nickel in profit, you're going to not be talking for very long. And, you know, you've got these groups, these people that think they're doing it for social justice or all these other retarded activist activities that are basically kind of going along with it because they think it's a means to an end. These people don't give a shit. Some fucking international corporation doesn't give a shit about your feelings. Some politician in Brussels doesn't give a fuck if you're triggered. They just want what they want, and you're helping that along. And this notion that it's some dark backroom conspiracy that they're, you know, the smoking man is there from the X-Files and they're all laughing maniacally. That's not really what it is. It's, it's more of a, a serendipitous conspiracy. It's a bit of good luck on the part of all parties involved that they all wanted to head in this general direction and they noticed each other going there. 
and so they fuck it. We'll work together a little bit to get to where we want to be. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you a lot there, but I I, I do think I do still think that, uh, that there is cause for very careful optimism when it comes to this because, um, I mean, t t take Britain, for instance, and I know it's a little bit unrelated, but uh, it does have to do with the European Union. Uh, th the Brits made me very proud when they decided to leave, and it, it's a fairly big difference uh, in, in turnout. It, it's it's 4% difference in the Wait, in so the... The United Kingdom made you proud. Now, what part of that made you proud? Was it the part where the British will try people for saying mean things on Twitter? Or is it the part where the Scotland police force actually investigates social media posts to see if they can arrest them? I, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Yeah, it feels like they've woken up. You've got the Brexit vote. People are kind of tuned into what's going on. They don't want to be controlled and more power to them. But at the same time that's going on, the shit I'm talking about is still happening concurrently with it. You know, it, it's still plowing full street, you know, steam ahead. The, the, this crazy shit is still happening. Um, no, no, I, I agree with you. And when, when it comes to the Scotland Yard, I mean, fuck, I, I, um, I, I know some people in, in Britain and they, they've told me that there have been events uh, in Scotland, for instance, where the cops will actually come knocking on your door just because of a fucking Twitter comment. Yeah, I, uh, I had some guy argue with me on Twitter. I swear to God, this guy followed me and I have no fucking idea why. He actually argued, he got upset when I told Scotland uh, Scotland Yard or whatever police force it was that had made this tweet to go fuck themselves. Um, he got upset with me and said, you can't say that. That's it basically hate speech and you're going to get arrested for speaking, for saying that. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, in freedom land, here in America at least, while it lasts, I can say whatever the fuck I feel like saying. I don't care if their feelings are hurt. Fuck them for investigating tweets because somebody got offended. What a ridiculous waste of money. But yet this guy was adamant about it. And, you know, when you when you read the shit that he was into, you would think he would be aware of why what he's saying is so retarded. But he wasn't. Um, yeah, I have no fucking hope for the future, man. I think it's dark days ahead with this shit that's going on. Um, I, I, I like the Internet. I like being able to shitpost. I like the fucking freeform anarchy that exists with people being able to say kind of whatever they want and having a laugh at this ridiculous, absurd, farcical shit. And I don't want to see it sanitized, but that's the direction it really is headed. You, you basically had an internet that was geeks, nerds were using, so nobody fucked with it. And then there was this intermediate uh, period where some people started using it. And it was kind of this fun, um, almost, uh, God, I don't know, secret clubhouse mentality for a while. Then AOL came on. You got more normal users coming in. And it was still kind of like that. But, but now everybody's on the internet. And once all these fucking mainstream people come onto the internet, they, they just don't get that. They just want all the bad stuff removed. They want to see their Disney cartoons, and they want to fucking see the adverts without somebody screaming nigger, nigger, nigger right below it. Cat videos. Cat videos. They want to watch fucking cats play the piano. They, they find that shit. Hysteria. They want to go on Reddit and read about the newest memes. Oh, those, that's some hot shit grandma told them about on Facebook. That's what they want. <laughs> get 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 that mean stuff out of here. Oh yeah, no. Uh, but the worst country by far, though, is is probably Germany because um, yeah, I, I mean, of of course, you're familiar with uh, crowd and tea. Uh, Germany's a shithole. I'm aware of a lot of things in Germany. Germany is overrun with tan Germans, but nobody talks about it because you'll get arrested because there's now German law regarding illegal opinions. That blows my mind that that actually made it into a fucking news article. That people were getting arrested for having illegal opinions. What the fuck is that? I mean, it, it, people knew kind of ahead of time that Germany was really uptight. Like, you couldn't say certain things regarding the Holocaust or Jews without getting thrown in prison. But now it's illegal opinions. These are, as they describe it, far-right illegal opinions. There was a police raid from 20 different fucking precincts investigating people that held legal opinions in Germany. What uh, this, I feel like Europe is a madhouse. Europe as a whole is a fucking madhouse. And Germany is like the epicenter. It's that cell with the guy that eats his own shit. That's what Germany is in that madhouse. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I actually watched this uh, documentary by uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the fat cuckold uh, Michael Moore, uh, his latest documentary. And uh, yeah, I actually do watch his documentary. So some of them I think are very good. 
the the latest one though is is just absolute fucking cancer because of the fucking lies. But in the documentary, he he showcases how it is in Germany, and I swear to fucking God, they have on the sidewalks in Germany in certain cities inscriptions of quotes by Jews during the Holocaust. You know, so Germans in those cities are quite literally every fucking day reminded that. Hey, you belong to the same race that fucking killed uh, so-called subhumans, you know, fucking 70 years ago. I mean, th this is actually a thing in Germany. So I, I think that the reason that Germany is, is the worst country by far when it comes to thought crime uh, is because of the fucking guilt. Well, yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's a whole host of reasons for why Germany ended up like it did, but... The, the way it is right now with the leadership that it has and the laws that are on the book and kind of the direction that it's going seems fucking insane to me. I, I, would, I would hate to be a German um, because like, you've got to be looking over your fucking shoulder uh, every time you talk about something. Like that, that, that feeling would suck. It, it would feel like you've got uh, the fucking secret police behind you. You know what I mean? If you post something somebody doesn't like, you're going to get investigated by the Berlin police. What? That's just insane to me that uh, that's a reality that they face. But it is a reality that they face. Um, and so that kind of ties back into the point that I was making earlier. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, these companies, they're agreeing to EU uh, kind of guidelines on how they should run their sites. And it's the fuckers in you know <laughs> Germany that are the ones that are speaking the loudest about what those should be. Yeah, and and uh, to 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 go back, you know, my 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 friend uh, Crowd and T. I mean, like he actually had to remove uh, some of his videos because, I mean, the thing is, if you look at his content, you see that nowhere do you find so-called hate speech. He 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 just mentions fucking facts when it comes to Islam and migrants and crime. Like that, 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 uh, that's. That, so that, you want to run it? You want to run an experiment? Change the title of this video from Aristocrat of the Internet with Mr. Medicare to Holocaust Discussion with Mr. Medicare. And I guarantee you, I almost can guarantee you that you will see prohibited next to that video in your uh, video manager that says cannot be viewed in Germany. You know, I, I wish I could say that you would be wrong, but I actually believe you. No, in fact, I know you're correct uh, when, when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the thing is, like, I, I live in Sweden, okay? So I, I live in Sweden, and as much as people like to make fun of, of this country, uh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of ridiculous shit when it comes to Sweden. The thing is, though, you don't really have this phenomenon of, of cops, you know, knocking on people's doors and, and questioning about tweets. I mean, as so-called cuckolded as Swedes are, at least we don't restrict people's, you know, freedom of speech the same way that Germany does. And well, see, it was, it was my understanding that Sweden, you know, isn't uh, as policed as a place like Germany would be because the majority of Swedes are too busy prepping the bowl to really talk shit on Twitter. Is that is that right? No, no, no. The, the, the thing is, in, in, I, I, would, I would actually say that Sweden is probably the country that is the closest to the U.S. at the moment in protecting free speech. There, there is no such thing as thought crime here, and uh, that, that's something that I want people to know because, I mean, my fucking God, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of shit here. There's a lot of fucking cancer here. You, you have fucking so-called gender-neutral daycares that are actually, you know, popular when it comes to the bigger cities like uh, Stockholm and even in fucking Gothenburg. Uh, but... Uh, for the, for the most part, uh, the cops will not actually bother you if, if you criticize uh, fucking Islam or anything else on, on Facebook. It, it just doesn't really happen here. And I, I don't know, that, that's also one of the reasons why I think that your pessimism when it comes to this is, is a little bit too simplistic. Because here you have a country that is fucking overrun with social justice nonsense. Uh, you know, when it comes to universities, for instance, and I, I go to a fucking university here, uh, it's probably worse than it is in, in Germany. Uh, but the thing is, though, at the same time, you have this condition where even though there is this social pressure to, to be, you know, politically correct, 
the, the legal system won't actually fuck with you. N nothing is going to happen to you if you simply just say on, on Facebook, I, I don't think we should take in as many fucking, you know, refugees as we are. Uh, we're, we're full. Please go somewhere else. Uh, nobody's going to knock on your door like they will in, in Germany. And I, I just want your thought, <laughs> not that you know much about Sweden, but why do you think that is? Well, a couple of things. Um, one, I, I think you're kind of misconstruing things here. I, I don't think it's the social justice kind of um, vector that's going to get the internet censored. I think they're useful idiots. They're loud and they provide a justification for the people that are going to push for that. I think, again, it's really politics, uh, specific groups of politicians, and I think it's, <clears throat> sorry, international businesses, different, um, you know, monetary interests. And I think that they don't really give a fuck um, what any of us think. They're going to just push through with what they want to push through with. And eventually one day you're not going to be able to say what you want to say on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or any of these other groups. Um, again, it, it it's money, man. It, it always comes down to money. I, they want to make some fucking money and they're going to get rid of shit that gets in their way uh, when it comes to that. Uh, as far as what I think of Sweden, I think of Sweden as being a country that doesn't know what the fuck it's doing when it comes to immigration, uh, that has a lot of feminists that really peddle some stupid fucking shit in their mainstream media and their universities and their government. Um, I, I, I don't know what your policing is like over there. I read stories all the time about shit that goes on in Sweden. So I, I don't know how widespread it is, but it doesn't paint necessarily a pretty picture. I'm sure there are a lot of people there that don't buy into the bullshit, but it seems like there are a lot of people that do. And it seems like the people that do are the ones setting policy. Well, I, I can tell you this much. Uh, you know, when I said before about, uh, when I mentioned before about uh, gender neutral daycare and so on, th th that is a, a bigger city phenomenon. I mean, you, you essentially only have that in, in Stockholm, Gothenburg, Malmö, and maybe some other cities, but it, it's the bigger cities of, of Sweden, mind you. Uh, most people here, they're just sane people, like they're actually fucking sane. Uh, maybe not as many as I would wish are enlightened as when it comes to the facts uh, of, of, of the matter. But yeah, mo most people are just normal fucking people and they are honestly starting to get sick and tired of the political correctness. I, I actually think that Sweden is ironically going to be one of the countries that will, you know, the, the quickest uh, of all the other countries uh, essentially just, just reject political correctness eventually. I, I do think so. It's moving. Oh, in that I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be enough of you around to reject shit. <laughs> I think I think that's a pipe dream. I mean, when you're kind of talking about where is the political and uh, monetary power located, it'd be in the big cities, wouldn't it? I mean, that influence would be in the large population centers, not out in rural areas, not out in suburbs where maybe people are being woke. Um, but the, the people that are buying the shit hook, line, and sinker are in the big population centers. And that's kind of the danger. I mean, it becomes this big fucking um, echo chamber. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. I, 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 I see your point there, but I, I just want to raise one point, and mm -hmm. it's the fact that uh, even though these uh, city dwellers may look down on people on the countryside as mere peasants and intellectually inferior, their vote still counts the same. And I don't know if you know about this party in Sweden called the Sweden Democrats. Yep, I'm aware of them. Yeah, and they're growing like a fucking weed. Uh, in 2006, they barely got 2% of the vote, I think. In 2010, they got 5.7%. And in the election in 2014, they got 13%. So they had grown. They had essentially more than doubled their size. They had gone from almost 6% to fucking 13%. So it's it's a huge growth in just four years. And at the moment, in opinion, they're somewhere around 25%. And this is a party that is very openly anti-immigration uh, and very much anti-EU, mind you. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I do have hope because yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not being idealistic here. I'm not being naive. Uh, you, you still have a lot of cleaning up to do when it comes to academia and just, just you know, fucking uh, society as a whole. But I, I do think that the way to go forward is political in order to stop the kinds of things you're, you're talking about here. And yes, I, I know that Sweden is a fucking small fucking country in, in the north. Nobody really gives a shit. But 
maybe, maybe we will have some kind of effect on our neighbors and that in turn will, you know, maybe cause other countries as well to act. If, if you see my point here. Your neighbors? I thought Norway and Finland were building a fucking wall for you people. I thought they were containing, <laughs> I thought they were containing the fucking problem. What do you mean an effect on your neighbors? They've got their guns pointed at your direction. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, the Norwegians were actually smart enough to stay out of the EU completely. So, yeah, B bravo, Norwegians, bravo. Uh, anyway, I, I think we need to uh, change the focus towards uh, freedom land, as you, you put it. Uh, the, the land of uh, fucking XXXXXXXL clothing and Humvees mm -hmm. and fucking hamburgers that will give you a heart attack if you just look at it. America, America, fuck yeah. Yeah. What What do you think about the presidential election? Oh, I'm enjoying it. It's funny as shit. Um, I really like the uh, Republican uh, kind of run up where you had people like the Zodiac Killer and uh, Jeb Turtle Bush. I mean, that, that <laughs> shit was fucking entertaining as hell to me. This proves, uh, you know, right now kind of the main thrust of it with Hillary and uh, Trump is going to be even more entertaining. I mean, I know she's giving a speech today where she's going to talk about Nazi Twitter frogs, so that's going to be fucking excellent. Um, I can't wait for them to get into the debates because that's going to be just a great shit show. I've watched kind of other people on the sidelines speaking. Um, what's her fucking name? Jill Stein, who basically shielded for Black Lives Matters. She got out there and said, uh, she said something that I saw somebody bring up in your chat. Uh, riots are the voice of the unheard. And, you know, Black Lives Matters has has a point. What what just what a piece of shit she is. Um, you got people like Bernie Sanders who, you know, I mocked him ruthlessly for the last uh, six or seven months. I had people on the Metacast like Kyle who really believed in Bernie Sanders. Um, that guy's a piece of shit. He, he had a bunch of people that believed in him that gave him all this money. And even though I laughed at him and said, you're going to get fucked over, he's insane. Um, he, he, he completely shit on them. He bent a knee to Hillary. He didn't even put up a fucking fight. All these people threw all this fucking money at him. They they financed him. They believed in him. And he just shit right down their fucking mouth. How how heartbreaking is that? Now, um, th this may come as a surprise to you, considering our, our topics so far and the fact that I'm not really afraid to just fuck say anything that goes against the uh, status quo. But I actually supported Bernie Sanders. I, I did. And I, I have to say... Uh, I don't know why he dropped out. I, I think it was sad for, from my perspective. But at the same time, though, when I think about it, um, maybe, just maybe, Trump in the White House would be better just simply because Bernie Sanders, even though I, I do think he had a lot of good points, and even so though... So, wait, I, I, I just I want to make sure I understand this. The Swedish guy likes Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, well, what a shock, I, I know. Wait, wait to live what, what up to that shock. fucking stereotype. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no. But the point is, I, I actually, uh, you know, afterwards, when I analyzed the situation, I've come to the conclusion that it's probably better to have Trump in, in the White House than Bernie, because even though I, I liked Bernie and even though I liked his suggestions, yes, you're absolutely correct when you criticized uh, the, the supporters before, but a lot of them just want free shit. I, I agree with you, full, you know, wholeheartedly there. I, I agree, uh, but the 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 reason that I I think that Trump is actually better is because Sanders had one major fucking weakness. Now you may think that he has several, but I I can agree with you that he has one major weakness. He no has a, what's what's the weakness? Okay, he has a huge soft spot for so-called social issues. And even though I liked his policies for the most part, uh, except for the fucking wage gap, uh, sorry, uh, minimum wage, I mean, fuck, is, is that stupid? Y you can't have the government change the fucking minimum wage. It, it has to happen naturally. You know, there's a balance to the fucking economy. I think Bernie Sanders needs to read a fucking book on economy. But anyway, I'm, I'm, get, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, being sidetracked here. Uh, the reason Trump would be good, I think, is he just doesn't give a fuck. You know, you call him a sexist, he doesn't give a fuck. You call him a racist, he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't play to any kind of agenda, except for Trump. Trump cares about Trump. And even though there's a lot that I actually don't like about him, I actually think that makes him the best candidate at the moment because 
yeah, he's going to get shit done, or at least try to. Um, well, I mean, shit, when it comes to Sanders, you said he has a, a, a huge soft spot. I would say that's where the fucking brain trauma uh, took place. I mean, <laughs> the, the man is fucking retarded. I, I don't think his policies were sound to begin with. But what really upsets me about Sanders in particular is people actually believed in him. They really legitimately believed in him. He was, you know, a fucking uh, 19th degree hyper dimensional chess player. And he knows what he's fucking doing, right? Sanders has the plan. He's going to save America. Let's give him all our money. Let's take out five fucking uh, mortgages on our house to finance his campaign. And then he gets to the convention and everybody's like, he's going to fight. He's going to fight. And WikiLeaks comes out with all this DNC shit that was going on with Debbie uh, Washerman Schultz or whatever her name is. And he doesn't do anything. I just, God, talk about the death of a dream if you were a Bernie Sanders supporter to see him just fucking wither in front of you after all his tough talk and taking all that fucking money. And what's the most recent story you saw about Bernie Sanders? Bought a $600,000 fucking summer home, which is what, his fourth? So, you know, it just he's just a fucking piece of shit, in my opinion, when it comes to Bernie Sanders. Um, as far as Trump, I, you know, I, I've said this consistently for nine or ten months now. I'm not voting for him. Um, I find him uh, charming. I love that he goes out there and says whatever the fuck he wants to say. Uh, but his policies in regards to certain things with national security and when we're talking about stuff like the prison program don't align with what I believe in. I, I sure as shit don't, you know, believe in Hillary Clinton. She's got a whole fucking laundry list of shit that uh, makes me not trust her. Not to, not the least of which to mention uh, a barbell executions. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of hope Trump wins, but I don't know if he can even right the ship. I, I really don't know if he'll be able to fight the crap that's going on in Washington. I, I don't know if he would get overwhelmed by it. Um, and it just, it feels so fucking rigged. It feels so helpless. It feels like Hillary has got everything kind of aligned on her side. She's got the mainstream media to kind of push the story she wants. She's got uh, backing from financial, uh, different financial groups, different uh, international interests like uh, the Saudis and all these other fuckers. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know how you can look at everything or anything really with uh, any fucking hint of optimism when it comes to the future, be it the internet or politics or anything, really. It just feels like we're just slowly marching towards the ultimate shit show, and it's we're completely helpless. There's nothing we can do to stop it. Yeah, no, I, I, I see your point, and like you said before about Bernie, you know, just watching him uh, essentially just taking the money and running, uh, I mean, of course he had his reasons. He, he was treated incredibly badly by by the DNC, just the Democratic Party in general. But still, I mean, fuck, this guy claimed that he wanted to fight for people. And then when he had a chance, he took the money and, and ran. And yeah, I, I did lose respect for him. And I am very much uh, just angry at him, to, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, the, the thing is, when it comes to uh, Hillary and... <laughs> I don't know how much of this you want to get into because maybe this stream will be mysteriously cut if, if we get into this. But uh, yeah, uh, 46 people who have been involved with the Clinton family have mysteriously ended up dead d during three decades. I mean, just, just, just think about this statistically. What the fuck are the chances that 46 people who have all been involved in investigations against the Clintons have ended up dead? I have no idea what the math would be on that, but um, yeah, it's very mysterious, isn't it? Can you kind of see why Assange is real hesitant to talk about his fucking sources when it comes to the DNC shit? He doesn't want somebody, you know, tripping onto a bullet. Um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of surreal. It's fucking bizarre. Uh, a lot of things with Hillary are kind of surreal and bizarre, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, the questions of her health when it comes to the election. Uh, kind of some of her mannerisms and behavior not you know and i don't agree with all of them being symptomatic of some kind of an illness i think some of it's just her fucking around you know some kind of an awkward sense of humor but there is cause for concern uh in regards to her health there are some issues that i think are legitimately raised um same with you know financial ties same with all these people mysteriously dying uh when it comes to the clintons or the clinton foundation or just people that they do business with but who the fuck's going to get us answers on that? I mean, look at kind of what's happened with WikiLeaks, right? Um, they were beloved, beloved by the left. 
uh, kind of in the start. Oh my, yeah, they're really sticking it to the fucking Republicans. That was kind of the mentality of uh, the left, the left wing, kind of left uh, leaning media. But recently, once they started kind of talking about Hillary Clinton or doing the DNC leaks, now they're the worst fucking thing on earth. Now they're racist, sexist, misogynist. Now they're hate speech, uh, you know, uh, advocates, and they're they're just getting hammered. And that's that's one of the small kind of groups that'll go out there and, and say, yeah, we've got this information. Yeah, we're going to put this information out. It's been vetted. It's been verified. We're not just fabricating it. Uh, but they're they're getting fucking shit on. I mean, look at Assange's interview with Bill Maher. Maher. Maher tried going after him. You know, he did it in that comic sort of way. You know, that John Stewart, Bill Maher. They all they have this kind of a approach to wanting to shit on somebody, but they do it in a very subtle way. I, I, I would just like, like to correct you there because, you know, a, a comedian is actually supposed to be funny. Yeah, what I'm saying is the comedy is a mask for what they're trying to really get at. Yes. And, yeah, and what, what you're seeing with people like, you know, Stewart and Moore, um, Colbert, because they're really good at their craft. They can do it when they want to. Um, but, it, and specifically in regards to Moore, was kind of this subtle nudging at Assange to try to implicate him for being, you know, this, this shit heel where I don't think if this had been about the RNC or if this had been five or six years ago, that would have happened. Yes. And yeah, no, WikiLeaks is whatever Miss Clinton wants it to be. That's, that's what people need to realize. And the, the thing about Miss Clinton, I, I also want your opinion on this. It's 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 one of those controversial topics. Again, not quite as controversial as her actually, you know, having hit men, uh, killing people. But uh, it, it's about her health. And the thing is, I'm actually an educated nurse. I I could work as a nurse if I wanted to. I I've read basic medicine, and <laughs> I, I I have to say I I didn't think about it at first, but the way she behaves, uh, the way she bobs her head, the attacks she has, uh, the forgetfulness, uh, the weakness in the limbs, uh, the, the fact that she has to sit down every fucking five minutes, you know, and she, she's constantly, you know, dehydrated, it seems. Those are signs of some kind of neurological disorder. You, you, you cannot get away from this. And I'm not saying that she has some kind of neurological disorder, but I just want to point it out, she does show the symptoms of it. Uh, do you think there's anything to it? Well, I'm not a fucking uh, nurse or a doctor, so I couldn't tell you. I, I, my personal opinion wouldn't matter. I'm not educated on it, but it does present itself as weird. I've seen people talk about it that seem to somewhat know what they're talking about. I mean, you had, um, oh, what was the investment guy's name? Uh, Martin Schreckel, Shrecky, whatever the fuck it is, uh, talk about you know how he, he he worked to make the most profit he could. That was the guy that took what was it the AIDS drugs and made it four billion times the cost of what it should be. But he he talked about how she kind of had Parkinson's like symptoms, and you know it it sounded good. But again, I'm a layman. I I don't fucking know. I I do know though that she comes off as really fucking weird, um, and she's had some bizarre tics and mannerisms that make you go, is there something there? Um, she hasn't really had a lot of public appearances. She hasn't done a lot of speaking tours. She coughs a lot, and that seems to be a consistent theme. She's had falling incidents where she got a concussion, what, in 2012? Yeah. Um, there, it just it feels like, based on that and just watching her kind of operate and how she's kind of stepped away. I mean, she's running for president. She should be out doing fucking speeches every day and on press circuits every day, and she's not, really. Um, it just feels like there's something there. It really does to me, but again, that's a gut feeling. I couldn't, I couldn't give you like a solid. Well, I've got a, a doctorate in uh, neuroscience, so this is what's going on. I have no clue in that regard. No, it's no, just, and neither do I. I mean, I, I just, I just want to point out that I, I am an educated nurse, and I've worked with people who show the exact same symptoms as she is displaying, actually. And I mean, I, I can just tell you, it looks very familiar from from what I've personally experienced and what I've read about. Now, of course, I'm not a fucking doctor. I'm not pretending to be. I'm just putting. I, I'm just putting out a hypothetical here. I mean, this woman may not not just be cold blooded, as we already know, but she may actually be ill. You know, and and I, I just want people to question themselves. Like, do they actually want to vote for someone who may very well die while they're at the presidency? And 
Yeah, I, I think that's another nail in the coffin of, of Clinton, actually. I, I do think, I do genuinely think that Trump will win the 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 election i i do not n not by a lot but but he will win I, I do believe so because also when you look at uh you know former bernie supporters uh you know most of them i i think it's actually an overwhelming majority of them say that they will not vote for clinton they will either stay at home and not vote at all which is sort of in uh a passive vote for the opposition uh or they will just vote for trump and and that, that's that's the way it looks so i actually do think that uh trump will win uh but i'm, I'm I, not I, i'm not betting on it though but i i do think so i i think he has a lot of support but i think that uh, you know kind of what i touched on earlier he has a lot of people gunning for him and it's not just from uh the opposition side of the aisle it's not just mainstream media or hillary and the dnc He's got a lot of people behind him that are trying to stab him in the back. You've got people like Mitt Romney. You've got people like Salter Damas, fucking Bill Kristol, who has made it his almost life mission for the last eight months to try to take Trump down. I mean, he went to this big meeting with all these billionaires and business interests and people in the GOP to talk about how can we fuck Trump over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. But so, I mean, you've got this pull from the left. You've got this pull from the right. They're trying to shit on him as hard as they can. Um, he's, but you know, Trump's got a very loyal support base. He's got a lot of fucking people that are really, really pushing him. And the thing that I think gives Trump a bit of an edge is the people that support Trump have a better fucking sense of humor than the people that support Hillary. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. A comedy is a big fucking weapon. Uh, being able to make people laugh and have a good time is a big fucking weapon. And a lot of Trump supporters have that kind of going for them. Uh, some of the best shit posting you'll see on social media sites come from Trump supporters. That gets attention, that gets laughs, it gets people kind of paying it, you know, paying a little more attention than they would have. Uh, Trump gets up there and he says things that resonate with people. I mean, nobody likes being under this fucking um, almost suffocating blanket of political correctness. They like being able to hear somebody just fucking say something. And even if some of the stuff that he says uh, is stupid on occasion, they fucking like it because it feels natural. It feels like an actual honest to God person getting up there and speaking their mind. It doesn't feel like this bullshit, polished, rehearsed, politically correct speech that's going to hit all the right demographics and all the right numbers. They just want somebody that's fucking real. That's, I think, what a lot of people want, uh, regardless of the country that they're from. But a lot of Trump supporters, <laughs> they, 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 they tuned into that, and he, he resonates with people because of that. Yes, and yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree with you there. I, I, I think the biggest pull of, of Trump, um, it is the fact that he makes jokes that are not quote-unquote safe, you know. He, he yeah. dares to mention things like, I mean, it's, it's true when he mentions that when, when Mexico <laughs> sends their people, he, they're not sending their best, you know. It, it's true. It's, it's fucking true. Uh, he he does mention uh, that, yeah. I I think he has publicly denounced uh, the the wage gap myth. Uh, I I think there's actually this video where a a woman, uh, obviously a a Democrat or I'm sorry I pronounced it wrong. It's demo cunt, uh, who who actually asked him uh, live. Um, if if I elect you, will I make as much as a man? And and he just responded in the most perfect way possible. You will make as much when you do as good of a job, you know. And and, and that that's that's I that's one thing that I, I I think that's his best weapon actually. Just because most people, I'm 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 fucking uh, I, I I fucking believe this at, at this point. Most people, it may not be an overwhelming majority, but a majority nonetheless must be aware at this point that the wage gap myth is just that it, it's a myth i i, I am right. convinced about that most people realize it's bullshit well again though I, I i throw it back to what i said earlier which was a lot of people are fucking stupid and lazy nowadays um i i think they just buy into it because they've been told that it's true um and i think when they hear trump bring up an argument for merit which is what he was doing when he said if you do as good a job you'll get as much money they see it as sexist they see it like, oh my God, he's not saying work hard and make money. He's saying, well, obviously a woman doesn't work as hard as a man, so she could never make the money. It's some kind of Machiavellian 
um, you know, uh, turn of phrase that he's using to not say something, but I know what he's really saying, and it's sexist bullshit. People are fucking dumb. <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, reiterate that enough. Um, yeah. And so, you know, that, that things like the wage gap myth, uh, rape statistics on university campuses, crime rates, a lot of this shit comes down to people just not looking, they, they don't accept that the onus is on them. So they just take whatever they're given at face value. And if it comes from a friendly source they like, they believe it. Yeah, I, I very much agree with you there. Actually, when it comes to my generation in, in general, I, I don't know how old you are. Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Go on. Oh, okay. Uh, f fuck it then. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid-20s, and I, I just have to say, when I look at my generation, I, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's, it's really fucking sad. You have a bunch of people who honestly spend more time looking into their fucking phones than into the eyes of other people. Uh, I genuinely believe that this generation that I'm part of doesn't know how to fucking socialize. I mean, uh, do you think that's actually part of it? Do you think that a lot of the problems we have also stems from the fact that people just don't know how to talk to each other anymore? I think sociology stuff is fag shit. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I, I think when you're talking about people's ability to socialize with each other, what you're seeing is kind of almost like a, not even meta, like an omni culture. Uh, people can get this feedback that they want. And, the, and to do that, they ignore their local community. So basically what you have is this weird kind of situation where you've got a person that has an opinion or belief or an interest and nobody in their community has that belief, interest, uh, they don't hold that ideology. So instead of learning to kind of interface with the people around them, they just seek out that exact same opinion on the internet. And it becomes this replacement for their local community. It comes this kind of replacement for that basic neighborly interaction with other fucking people that you live around. Uh, I think people today are very socially awkward and I think social media has helped that along because you can seek out anybody that agrees with you and you never have to hear an opinion you don't like. Um, and it, it's made them fucking weird people to interact with in the real world. Uh, how, how bizarre is it that you can walk down a street and everybody's on their fucking phone or they're, they're playing Pokemon Go and shit. Nobody smiles at each other. Nobody fucking waves at each other. People don't talk anymore. They sit there like fucking zombies afraid of each other. Like, oh, I don't want to talk to that guy on the bus. Who knows who he is? I'm just going to log on to Twitter and talk to somebody else. It's, it's it's just a weird fucking situation, and I'm I'm sure different groups would uh, that do study it fucking love it because it gives them something to do with their day, you know, sociologists and even maybe some psychologists. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I, I went to theater school actually uh, when I was fifteen. So did you get your nursing degree from theater school? <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I, I went to theater school when I was fifteen, and I graduated when I was eighteen, and then I was unemployed for a long while because, as you might have guessed. Hey, you you don't get too many fucking jobs with you know, you know, with with, with that kind of education. Uh, and, wait, and, wait. So you you can actually say to a fucking patient that you're not a real doctor, but you play one on TV. No, no. Listen, listen, listen. Legitimate listen. statement. No, no, no. It, 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 trust me, it's it's not that bad. I mean, I if I could, I get away with it. Sure, I I would impersonate. Fuck the the pay is a lot better than you know being uh you know just just a partial uh, time actor. But no. Uh, after I had graduated, I was unemployed for over a year, and then I took this uh, course uh, to become a nurse. And uh, after, um, let's see. Are, are, wait, are you? You're fucking with me. You're reading from like a comedy skit. So you're telling me that after you went to theater school, you were unemployed for a year? Yeah, it's hard to believe. I know. It's shocking. It's it's tearing my worldview apart. Yeah, okay. I, I know. I know. You know. I. It, I mean, you should totally just be able to to get a job as a fucking. You know. I, I don't know. A, a, a fucking. Uh, you know, a president of a company with that kind of education. It's it's fucking high caliber. You know. Pfft, who knew? Who knew? Yeah, it's crazy. Huh? It, it's it's crazy. I I know. I know. Uh, but anyway, then, then I educated myself to become a nurse, and then I've worked as a fucking nurse, personal assistant, pupil assistant, uh, home assistant, a, a lot of those kinds of jobs. Uh, and then I eventually started studying. So now I'm studying chemistry at, at a university. Uh, but yeah, th that's actually one thing that pisses me to fuck off when it comes to my generation. And you have all these fucking entitled millennials who, um, well, if they're my age, maybe they're not actually millennials, but, you know, 90s kids at least, uh, who 
are so fucking entitled. They, they, they sort of think that jobs just sort of grow on trees. And then I ask them, like, okay, what the fuck is your education? And I mean, <laughs> I, I get two types of answer. Either that they haven't, you know, gone to any real education at all. They've just, you know, graduated from high school and then they just expected to get a job. Or they have something, you know, fucking, you know, useless like fucking gender studies or some other fucking useless degree. Uh, and then it's like, well, what the fuck did you expect? I mean, I mean, really, what kind of job do you think you 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 can get in today's job market with that kind of uh, low caliber education? I, I mean, I mean, really. Right. Well, I mean, the joke used to be it was uh, English and lit majors that were fucked when it came to getting jobs, like you know, kind of pre-internet. Um, yeah, people people get degrees now that don't don't really get them any work or when they get into the workforce. I mean, there have been a, a couple of news stories that I read uh, regarding millennials kind of coming out of college and into the workforce that face the reality of what a job is like and uh, don't like it. Um, a lot of bosses say that they don't like working with that specific age range because they show up late the most, they want the most money, they want the most vacation days, they want promotions the quickest. It's that kind of participation trophy award mentality that I am special and I am unique and I should be catered to when you're walking into a job force that doesn't really give a fuck who you are. They just want you to make the fucking cogs. And if you don't make them fast enough, they're going to fire your ass. Um, so it's this, it's kind of this weird, almost hysterical um, post-college uh, period that people are going through where, oh my God, my, my gender's degree study or my gender studies degree isn't getting me a five-figure job, a six-figure job, a seven-figure job. Who, who fucking knew? Well, of course, their parents knew when they begged them to get a, something that was going to actually put them ahead of life. Um, yeah, that's just uh, that's my, that's my thought on it, I guess. I just, I like that you went to theater school and then you couldn't get a job afterwards. Yeah, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I knew full well that I, I was probably not going to get a fucking job. Essentially, I, I haven't had the best uh, experience with the educational system. Let, let me put Let me put it that way. And I was just fucking sick of it. I just wanted to do something that was fun for three years. And I knew full well that I was probably not going to get a job. I would probably have to educate myself to become something else. But I, I just wanted that time to to just do something that actually made me happy, if if you know what I mean. And I mean, again, this this was high school, so so this wasn't you know university or anything. So when it comes to high school, you you can sort of afford to to choose something that is sort of useless. It doesn't really matter at that point, but. At the university, yeah, it, it does matter. It, it really does because even though the education per se is is uh, you know paid for by the state here, uh, you, you still have to pay for your own fucking upkeep, and you you, you do take uh, loans to to uh, to essentially just be fucking alive. So yeah, it's good that the education itself is uh, universal and it's 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 uh, paid by the state, but. Uh, a lot of people don't realize just the kind of debt that they will, you know, gather unless they're careful about what they are actually studying. And the thing is, I mean, uh, even though, yeah, partially the reason why I study chemistry is because I, I know that it's it's a good market. I I will probably most likely get a good job, and it's fucking well paid. I mean, like the the salary you get as as a fresh employee is fucking really fucking high. It's it's really high. Uh, but it's it's also because I have a passion for it. So it's not just acting or you know the the artistic side. It's it's also chemistry. I I love it. I I love to deal with it. Uh, I think it's fascinating. It's something I want to do. I want to uh, make all kinds of discoveries. Uh, and and to see if I actually have the capability to do that. Well, I I have to study it. I have to become a chemist and I have to work with it. But I I also think it's not just that people these days, my generation, have this naivete when it comes to education. I, I also think it's sort of like you say, a, a lot of them are just fucking lazy. They, they want to study something that's simple and nobody has taught them how to think, you know, ahead, to, to, to think about the future, you know, and, and actually think like, how will it be in, in you know, fucking four years or are you going to have a steady income? Or are you going to have a bunch of fucking debt and no way to pay it? Right. Well, wasn't that the criticism? Uh, what was the results that got posted today? And I, I don't know, know shit when it comes to Europe's uh, educational systems, but it was the GSCE. What is that? The General Studies Certificate Exam or whatever? 
uh, for the uh, junior high and high school grades in like Britain and shit. Um, but I saw some articles talking about the results and saying how people were um, scoring easier because it was easier as it went along and that this was kind of bolstering their grades and giving them a, a false sense of where they were at in relation to their studies and they're going to change it from a grade system to a number system so they can make it more rigorous or some shit. But I, I think you have a lot of people that, yeah, you know, again, lazy and fucking stupid, uh, don't really plan ahead as best they can when looking at what do I want to do at university. And I think, too, there's this weird kind of, um, uh, I, I don't know how to put it, subcurrent or something uh, in regards to people's attitudes towards trade skills. Uh, like, I, I've noticed that a lot, especially with a lot of younger people. They seem to have this kind of attitude that, you know, manual labor or having a trade skill or, you know, doing something like that is beneath them. You know, working with your hands is beneath you. How, uh, you know, I want to get a gender studies degree. I don't want to learn plumbing or electrical work or any of this. When those are really secure jobs that pay really good money and have, you know, a good standard of living. Oh, and yeah. There's nothing, nothing to be ashamed of when you do that kind of fucking work. But Oh, yeah. I, I have to ask you, do, do you know of Micro Media? Uh, that sounds really fucking familiar, but the way you're saying it, I'm not sure. I might yeah, Mike Aru, uh, he, he's this 50-year-old uh, guy. He, he makes these really funny videos. He has this avatar, you know, a, a cow skull, lemur eyes, fucking vicar clothing. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and I, I did this discussion with him, uh, and we actually got in on, on that topic, and I, I just think it's fucking ridiculous how how these professions, I mean, blue collar jobs, I mean, a good way for you, if you don't want to do a lot of fucking studying and, and you still want to get into a job that's fucking secure, it, it's not going to be outsourced, okay? And you're still going to make a lot of fucking money. You know, the trades are perfect. I mean, you can make a lot of money as a plumber. You can make a lot of money as an electrician. You can make a lot of money, anything within those fields, okay? And the best part is you, you can start your own business fairly easily and, and work on your own fucking, you know, conditions. Uh, if, if, if you don't have any fucking assignments for one day, you can say, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to do something else this day. You know, today I'm just going to go to the fucking zoo with my kids. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of freedom. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm, you know, passionate about chemistry, I, I could very well imagine getting, you know, some kind of uh, certificate in, in the trades. It's, it's a good fucking job, and it teaches you something that is fucking handy. I mean, like, you know, if you're a plumber and a pipe breaks in your home, well, how fucking convenient, you know? But, you know, this generation, they, there is this mentality that they are, like you said, you know, above manual labor. Yeah, that that's I think heavily promoted. I think the idea it's it's looked at as being beneath them, which I think is really fucked up. Um, I, I you know that that at least in my country comes down to kind of the outsourcing of manufacturing and uh, an increase in importing goods, and, and I don't know. It it just it feels like yeah they they look down on manual labor that they think that they are wholly unique and special and entitled to the best of the best, and that you know the easier path is the one that they want to walk. And the easier path for them is not doing a trade skill, and it's not doing a STEM field. It's some weird fucking liberal arts degree that won't really provide them a future. Uh, so, you know, I, I think there was two crossover with that group and with Bernie Sanders. The notion of free shit for everyone, high pay for everyone, all debts forgiven was fucking great because they're all stuck with these degrees that can't get them jobs. So who cares? I'll work at McDonald's for 15, 16 bucks an hour with my free health care and for a given college debt. That's fucking great. That's, I think, what a lot of them thought. Yeah, no, and, and I, I also don't want people in the chat to think that I'm like this fucking uh, <laughs> blind supporter of, of Bernie Sanders. If you've just come into the conversation and, and you did come into the conversation uh, at a time when I said what I supported Bernie Sanders, I just want to point this out. Uh, one thing that annoyed the fuck out of me when it came to Bernie Sanders was the fact that, yeah, it, it was the minimum wage stuff. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm not an economist, mind you. As hard as it may seem, I, I've, I've gone to theater school, I've studied to become a nurse, now I'm studying to become a chemist, but I've never actually picked up a book on, you know, when it comes to the economy. Uh, but even I realize that it's a stupid fucking idea. You, you, you cannot have the government 
uh, decide what the minimum wage should be for people. You you just fucking can't. And I I was certain at a point that that would actually be you know his his undoing that that would be actually be his Achilles heel. Uh, thankfully, you know this generation is too fucking stupid to realize the the flaw in that. So yeah, they they wanted to support him anyway. Uh, oh um, uh, wait, I hate to cut this short because I'm I'm actually enjoying the conversation, but. I, I'm going to have to jump. Um, Hillary Clinton is doing her uh, Nazi racist frog speech right now, and I'm <laughs> dying to fucking watch that. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm going to cut this short then. Uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Mr. Medicare, uh Jim, uh, the glorious shitlord that is, I don't know, internet aristocrat formerly. Uh, thank you for being on my uh, shitty uh, discussion. Uh, I mean, what a gentleman like you is doing in a dump like this, I, I have no idea. I have no idea at all. Uh, I mean, I swear to God, my channel is sort of like the glory hole in, in your nearest bar. You know, you, you, you only go to my channel if if you if you have really fucking low standards. So I'm sorry to say you have really fucking low standards, sir. I, I again, I love it the fact that the Swede with the theater degree is talking about his channel being a glory hole. You keep that stereotype alive, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Thanks everybody who have been watching. Uh, honestly, what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, you you really need to have your head examined. Uh, yeah, and, and kids, please run with scissors. <laughs>